Bloody Pen Podcast. Well, 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 well. Come back to the Mighty Pen Podcast, me scrabbling. I'm your host, Joe Valen. Joe Valen. This is Joe Solo 12. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. I haven't said it yet. We come up with the titles at the end. The last one was uh, Joe Solo 11, The Fight for Motivation. We can find that on our YouTube channel at the Mighty Pen Podcast. We appreciate everybody subscribing. Thank you for all your interactions, comments, views. All of it helps. Um, Joe Solo 11 was the one, uh, The Fight for Motivation, where I look like King, King Leonidas with a big, big version of my head. Photoshop, courtesy of Lily Rarara. Okay, get right into it. What is new? I have completed my first feature-length screenplay. My first animated uh, feature-length film. I've written it. It's done, 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 done. It's ready to be shopped a boot, and Lily Rararu will do so. So I'm very excited. So now I am uh, officially a screenwriter as as well. I'm a novelist, I'm a comic creator, and I'm a screenwriter. I wear them all with pride. Other than that, I've been chipping away at the next novel. It is hilarious. I'm having a great time with it. And, uh, you know, everything's really good. Uh, as far as the screenplay is concerned, um, it will be a graphic novel before it is an animated feature, most likely. So you will see it in paper form before you see it in motion. Most likely. That's the plan. Um, speaking of graphic novels, I do have another one in production with Scattered Studios, head by Jason Doobie, friend of the show, uh, of Scattered Comics. We are making a comic together. And I'm very, very, very excited. It is a uh, horror uh, comic that is just just such an adventure. It is such a dark, 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 dark story. And I really um, am having fun with the illustration style so far. And um, we've picked up Summerdale for the cover artist. I'm waiting on that. So this sometime next week, I'm expecting the first eight pages um, done with uh, the cover. So it's a 24-page uh, issue. Issue one. So we're a third of the way there, a little over, if you count the cover. So I'm excited. It's going good. And um, other than that, Rob Powers is chipping away at Fibber number three. So when that is done, we will have that graphic novel compiled and out on Amazon as well. So that's that. Productivity. You know, I have a a full production list behind me in my little office, a little orifice here. And it looks healthy. It looks really good. By the end of 2020, I think I have really put in my work here. You know? You know? You know? You know. I don't think anybody uh, can take away my work ethic. That's something that, you know, that's the good thing about a work ethic. Even if you have people out there against you, if you're just cranking and you're doing a lot of stuff, they can't deny that. You know? You know? You know? You know. And at one point, haters start to kind of turn into cheerleaders. You notice that? You know, so, you know, somebody could be against you for a really long time and they tell everybody about it, you know. And what if, what if that person goes on and has a nice interaction with you and enjoys your work and sees that you're going places, right? And the person complaining about you has been doing the same shit for five to ten years. I know it sounds specific. That's because it is. It is specific. This has happened to me and others. It's not a unique phenomenon, you know. So, anyway, just a thought. Uh, let's go ahead and put in our first creator shout out. I, guys, I've had to go back and get some of the original ones since the last laptop melted. It's a pain. I, I should go back and find everybody. I'm just going to put this in at random. I don't know who it is, but let's go ahead and pop them in here. Creator shout out number one. one, one. This is Matt Knowles. And Steph Cannon from Insymmetry Creations. The creators of Heirs of a Sealed Ark, Tales from Nocturnia, and The Accursed. And you're listening to The Mighty Pen Podcast. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, 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 okay. Pushing on, pushing on, keeping it pushing. Joe Solo 12. 12. I don't know. I feel kind of weird. Like when I finished that screenplay, I, uh, I don't know. It's kind of depressing. It's a little weird. It's a big project. It still needs some tinkering at, uh, towards the end. So it's not like finished, 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 but it's finished enough to sell and pitch and, uh, definitely finished enough to copyright. So we're good. We're good. It's good. It's done. Uh, and I will polish it up over the next, uh, few days and it, it'll be right as rain. And then Lily will put the final edit, and boom, 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 boom. Screenplay in the can. That's exciting, guys. Finishing a thing. This is a pain in the ass. Learning that. It's hard for me not to step on the director's toes in my script, too. Like, I want to include certain shots that I think will, like, really make these actors. 
Um, I know this is an animated piece I just wrote, but I mean, like, there's some really key pivotal shots I don't want them to miss and just gloss over unless I really point it out. <clears throat> and, I, and it's a stylized piece. It's going to be a graphic novel first, so I do have a lot of calls for silhouette. I have a lot of calls for certain looks, you know, and um, I use a lot of parentheticals. And that is uh, a way for the actor to know how a line is read. And generally speaking, if it's going to go into something like that, you don't want to include a lot of those. Because if you're not stepping on the director's toes, now you're stepping on the actor's toes, that you're limiting their range. Now they, they have to play it the way you said to play it. Well, that sucks. And I have to be honest, in this screenplay, it's full of parentheticals. Because that was for the comic team, generally. So I may have to do a revision of it for film. I don't know. It, I mean, it's in the proper format, but I mean, like, as far as not pissing off the actor, I don't know. I don't know. I gotta, I gotta look into that. But either way, it's something that we can work with. It's something saleable. See, that's the thing, guys. You know, it's great to be working on all these projects, but what are you going to complete this month? What are you going to get done this month? You know, even if it means, like, let's say you're a novelist, even if it means that you're going to knock out a collection of short stories and, you know, whatever, and you chip away at that on the side. You know, because you can be getting that done quickly. That could be out circulating, selling, building your brand. Right? While you're chipping away at your, your main your main IP there. Your main novel. Your main project. So just a thought. Anyway, 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 anyway. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, thank you to everybody that's been following along with the makeshift audiobook on YouTube. The Mighty Pen Podcast YouTube channel. Shout out to our sponsor, spinwizcomics.com, where you can read Literally trillions trillions trillions. of comics, mainly for free, others for very cheap. Uh, My comic Fibber is located at spinwizcomics.com. Go over there and download that, if you will. That's a good one, okay? That's a sci-fi space adventure, and that's over on spinwizcomics.com. Sponsors. Other sponsors. Scatteredstudios.com. If you're making a comic, if you're a writer, and you're looking for the right art team, I know one. Scattered comics.com head by jason doobie and his team of artists it's kind of like a buffet you know pick your pencils pick your uh, colorist over here then you get your letterer and then so on it's nice i like it uh, it's been fairly easy going so far i'm also a customer i'm making a comic with them good stuff i re- highly recommend so there you go you can if you're a writer or you want to make a comic you can reach out to jason doobie at scattered comics on instagram or wherever scatteredcomics.com and uh ask for a quote Let them know what you're working with. Uh, You should have a script prepared. I will tell you that. That will help your life. That will help his life. So have a script prepared. Uh, But other than that, he'll issue you a quote. You make the thing. When the thing is completed, you go over to spinwizcomics.com to get it featured. There you go. Now between the two sponsors, you can make a comic and then have it featured right after. Boom, boom, boom. So uh, reading some uh, comments, I'm going to start doing this more from the YouTube channel to encourage it. Again, promote yourself in the comments. Uh, I don't mind that ever, 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 ever. Let's see where we're at. Joe Solo 11, the fight for motivation where I am poised as King Leonidas with a giant me head. Hilarious Photoshop. Okay, here we go. Newest first. Boom. That's the other thing. If you go to comments, guys, and you hit newest first, you see a whole bunch of ones that uh, YouTube is hiding for whatever reason. Uh, One of the first one was Cody Red. This was our most shared skit on Facebook. I hope you like it. It was funny. You can click on that and subscribe to his channel. He should be doing more comedy stuff. It was good. And uh, I could see him growing from that. <clears throat> we heard from Anthony Lopez. What's up, Prada? Charles Fiddler popped in to say hi. The boys from Sierra Nova Comics. Yes, yes. The uh, tone is everything in writing as well as motivation uh, each character has. That's something that I talked about, how a lot of um, uh, when you're working with artists, that a lot of them miss tone. Like I was working with a, a great art team not too long ago on my, you know, my passion project. And I pulled the plug 10 pages in because, A, I wasn't really having fun with the way that we did it. It was kind of like placing an order. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it didn't it didn't feel right. And the art was amazing, but it was not the tone I was going for. And it was just all off from the beginning. And I didn't have the experience to know how to get it changed in time. Then I ended up rolling with it. You know, then 10, 10 pages in, I'm left with this product that's not really what I was going for. I was kind of in an unhappy production situation. You know, just sucked. Like, don't do that. 
Don't do all that. Tone is everything. So that's what we're getting at. If the tone is wrong from the art side, you need to nip that in the bud right away. Um, and full disclosure, I got my first few uh, pages back from Jason, and I made some changes, and he got right on it. So that's all part of the process, guys. Uh, very normal. Okay, and then we heard from Robert A. Maltari. Robert A. Thanks for letting me share. Nightwolf issues one through four, urban fantasy, werewolf coming of age drama. A young man discovers that he was born a werewolf and is reluctantly thrown into a supernatural war against the Dark Covenant. Join the Wolf Pack by backing the Kickstarter at lonewolfcomics.com backslash nightwolf today. Okay, there you go. There you go. There you go. So, and, and you guys might have missed that if you didn't go to comments and hit new. So that's why I'm, I'm reading them now. So if you want, I highly encourage you to promote yourself in the comments on our YouTube channel, The Mighty Pen Podcast, and I will read them on the channel here. So there you go. That's extra filler for me, which I appreciate because I don't want to ramble about myself the whole time. Speaking of which, this is a good time to include another creator shout out. What's up, everybody? My name is Rob Powers, the creator of Penguino's Revenge, the story of a young samurai penguin who's out to save his family from captivity. Uh, you can check me out on Instagram, Facebook, and go to www.penguinosrevenge.com for more info. You're listening to the Mighty Pen Podcast. Okay, 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 okay. And back we go, cruising right along. Okay, no big deal. And this is why we like the Joe Solo. We sit down, we say hi. And that's that. That's that. That's that. I will be getting Lily back on the show soon. Uh, she's been busy with stuff, and these are really easy for me to knock out. And she's on a camping trip with her sister, so that's why I'm doing it. What else is new since the last time I got into stocks? <laughs> I'm dabbling. I'm dabbling. I'm investing. I'm playing the market. I've got skin in the game. I'm having fun. And then it kind of reminded me of poker, and I have this kind of like demon with poker where... I got kind of like too good at it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what re- went wrong with me in pokers. I got too good at it. That's why like, probably why I love ping pong to this day is I never got too good. I always got, yeah, I was always good, but I never got too good. I think I got too good at poker and it brought me to levels that were dangerous and uh, I ended up losing a lot of money in one day and quitting in a huff, very upset. And I didn't play for years. The only thing I would do is I would help friends out if they ask questions about it and whatever. So during this quarantine, I got into the stock market and I've been doing that and I've been messing with my cryptos and I've been investing in Lily and I's future since we do have a few bucks right now. So I think when you have a few bucks, you invest, right? So that's what we're doing and we're trying to set up for the future. Um, But it reminded me so much of poker in that you need a lot of money to get started to make money. So if you're going to make money at poker, for example, you need what's called a sizable bankroll. You need a bankroll that's large enough to sustain yourself through what they call the swings of, you know, losing one night, winning another night. You need to be able to uh, survive that and then long term be profitable. That's the idea. Same thing with stocks. Reminded me of it. So I got over on Poker Stars. You can find me uh, author Joe Valen. And I'm not playing for money yet. I say yet. I'm going to try not to. Okay. And I just wanted to see if my fundamentals held up. I, I do have my own play style. I devoted so much thought to it. I have notebooks filled of just my theories. I've read every book. I used to play in weekly tur- tournaments in Turning Stone Casino, upstate New York. And uh, just a real poker freak, right? So I figured, well, it's been years. The game's probably evolved. There's so many new players. You know, now it's all... You see more hands per hour online. It's a whole different... It's fully randomized versus you know, human error, it, it, it does make a difference in the flow of cards. And I thought, okay, well, I'll just play for play money and just see if I still have the touch, see if I'm okay, if I have the patience or whatever. And Lily's been gone two days on this camping trip and she left me a six pack of uh, some beers. I don't even drink anymore. Um, shout out chronic therapy. I do that, but I don't drink. And uh, she left me a six pack of beers. And, you know, for me, like three beers now, especially in, in Denver, in altitude, is you notice it, especially if you don't drink. And I got smashed with the cat, basically. I got a buzz on with the cat, and I got on Poker Stars last night, and I just kicked everyone's ass. <laughs> I don't know if that's a bad swear. I don't want to reverse that one. But it's true. I sat in like three tournaments. I placed in each one. One of them I won. The other one I came in second. The other one I came in third. Then I did like a sit and go tournament. And first thing in the morning, for like a lot more play money chips, you know, and I came in first and I won that and I joined another one. I got in second and I got chips for that. 
I don't think I've lost yet. I played a live game and I I left ahead. Like it's just ugh, it's like not even fair me sitting with these people. I like I oh it's weird because you think that you would need the people sitting at the table to know what they have, but guys, you got to believe me. Like just based on the pauses and stuff, I generally know what everybody has. <laughs> it's really it's really weird. It's really weird. I I am putting it to the test now. I have a million play money chips. I have so many already. You know, and I know I could just I think you have to jump through hoops now to play for real money. I don't know if, what the deal is with that. I don't think I'm going to bother because I got stocks. I'd rather just put into that. But um, it is fun, and I and I do get that same God, just that grind, just that sitting there. You just got to sit there, even if you get decent hands and you're you're in bad position, you shouldn't play them. You know, guys, I'm I'm a crazy player. I fold things like pocket jacks because I don't like the position I'm in. You know, but that's kind of what makes me so dangerous at, at a lot of these tables, especially tournaments. Um, the only thing I really have to watch out for is I don't play too slow that the blinds and annies, you know, grow too big and chip away at my stack. You know, so I, I don't just fold myself into losing. You know, you got to get a lead early on. You got to find an opportunity, but. You know, and that that actually happened in the stocks. That's what reminded me of that. That was with uh, Dogecoin. Everybody's laughing about Dogecoin. I looked at it. It was like. 0.0020 to buy a, a share of Doge stock, which was like a joke stock or a joke uh, Bitcoin that people are stubbornly hanging on to, like as far as just um, in in our culture, you know, it's got like the, he's got like the Dorg meme on it, you know, the Shiba Inu, and it's very recognizable. Well, apparently it's got legs, so I'm like looking at it and I'm like, you know, that's so cheap. I could invest a bunch of money in that, whatever. So I did. So I threw a bunch of money in it, right? So me and Lily are sitting there watching the tubers. I forget what we were watching. I want to say the burbs. I think we rewatched the we wa- rewatched the burbs, and it was amazing. One of my favorite movies ever. But we're watching burbs, and um, I'm checking on my Robin Hoods, right? And my stupid. Profits are going crazy. And I look and my dumb Dogecoin doubled, more than doubled. It went up like times five. And my profits just kept going up and up and up and up and up. It was crazy. That happened, then it came down, then it settled, and the next day it spiked again. And I guess there was some sort of thing on TikTok where somebody influenced somebody to buy it, uh, a bunch of people to buy it, a bunch of kids to buy it, and they all had Robin Hood and they all went and did it. And that's what happened? Uh, I guess. But I just got this huge pop of profit, so, you know... Um, well, things were good. I sold and then I invested in like big kid stocks. So I'm like, all right, cool. You know? So that was like a nice little pop of money. I do the same thing in poker. You got to find these opportunities and guys, I know it just seems like I'm trying to tie this little, you know, metaphor together or parable or whatever it is. Um, but I kind of feel that way about the industry too. You've got to, you've got to just grind and wait, grind and wait. And in our case, uh, submissions are part of our process. So Lily's now that I've completed my first screenplay now, you know, going to be involved in a full battery of submissions to all sorts of agents uh, that could mess with something like an animated film. Um, I'm going to write some live action stuff too. So while we're in quarantine, I'm just knocking out projects that she could potentially sell. And, you know, because I'm not looking at comics to make me any money anymore. But I still want to make comics because it's kind of the devil I know. Now I kind of know what I'm doing. You know, I learn each time. And now I've learned enough where the the process is a lot smoother. The artists that I'm picking are a lot more easygoing. And it's just simple, easy, 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 easy. you know. And the the products are great. And I'm just having fun with it. I think every project can break even and then some. Uh, and there's certainly legs to make a little bit of profit long term. Especially if you if you retain ownership and you stay at it. But... On a whole, I'm really just using those as my storyboards for my uh, film scripts. So that's it. So, and then if it's really, 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 you know, it's like a juicy story, I'll convert it into a novel. And that that can make money. So, you know, you just got to look at the industry and just go, well, all right, well, there's no money in comics. Everybody's complaining about comics. But I still want to make comics because it's awesome, you know, and it's fun. And it can be lucrative. I mean, if, if you're in the just perfect, perfect spot. Very lucky, though. Got to be very lucky. Um, or you got to have just that kind of story. 
just that kind of breakout crazy nobody can shut up about it kind of story. I don't I don't have those kind of stories. My stories are crazy. Uh, people do talk about them and they do resonate and seem to stick with people. You know, but they're my work is not meant to wow and and, and awe people. You know, and I'm not saying that I'm approaching this thing like Adam Sandler either. I mean, I I work at my craft. I try to be a good writer. You know, these stories are compelling. These, these are interesting. I put a lot of work into it. Um, so I'm not saying I'm lazy, but what I'm saying is I don't hold myself to the same standard as my heroes. Chuck Palahniuk's one of my favorite writers of all time. I don't compare myself to him, his writing. Very different. The man seems to love research. I detest research. You know, he really has a good way of putting his polish on our reality, you know, but my prerogative is to get you out of our reality. So it's very, very different. Now, if you wanted to compare me to like Douglas Adams, now we're talking, now I'm having fun. Okay. Yes. As a matter of fact, you know, that there's a, a, a thing with Douglas Adams where it's like, is it too funny? You know, like if he would have let it, some of those jokes just kind of like not be jokes and just put out a lot more. Would he, would he still be Douglas Adams or would he be a Tom Robbins? Right? You know? Or if he got more jokey, would he be a Vonnegut? I guess. I don't know what I'm saying. But just a thought. I, I tend to lie just south of Douglas Adams as far as jokes per minute. And um, I kind of wind up somewhere around a Tom Robbins, but I'm not as wordy. So I kind of get right to it. So I don't know. I don't know what you would call that. But that's how I write. That's how I feel about my writing. That is my stream of consciousness blather. Quick last minute creator shout out, right? Hyow, 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 hyow. Hello, this is Christy Shin, creator of Demon Bitch, and you are listening to the Mighty Pen Podcast. And that's it, guys. A very discombobulated, disorganized Joe Solo. Uh, we did shout out our sponsors, SpinWizComics.com and ScatteredStudios.com. Again, I always interchange those. I got to talk to Jason today. I know that they can operate under ScatteredStudios.com and scattered comics so i'll find out which he prefers me saying just google both uh he's not hard to find either on social media and i'm generally sharing his work so that's about that i appreciate you guys tuning in thank you to everybody that's been subscribing sharing this with a friend uh, i really want to grow this network up very soon you guys are tuning in you seem to be responding to the half hour rants um they're easier on us we will have some guests on soon but when I'm in this kind of like deep production cycle, like I'm not, I'm not trying to chase people around and get you on the phone. And then I got to, you know, plus like, you know, it's, it's hard for me to talk to other people about their work right now. Like my head's all in my own work. So I want to get some things out. Um, and then I'm going to make a break cycle to where I can have some guests on and really like explore their work. I'm going to review some other people's comics and books. Why not on the channel? So we're going to make some YouTube videos cause Twitch has kind of died out. And, um, that's it. That's it. We're just staying at it. We're staying busy. You know, if you want to help me out, you can get Unkillable Joe on Amazon. Pick up the paperback. You can go to spinwizcomics.com and download Fibber. That'll help me and Rob out. Um, watch our space for our new comic with uh, Jason Doobie of Scattered Comics. And uh, as far as my screenwriting, well, we're starting to accrue a lot more film friends. And I would say this. I mean... <laughs> It's weird. Like I, I get the sense that people may be a little intrigued, but they don't have the work to go off of to make a decision. So I would say this, if you are interested in having me write something for you, I generally don't take on other jobs just because that requires talking to other people. And, um, you know, my operation is so simple. I just make whatever the hell I want every single day and Lily goes out and sells it. It's, it's perfect. So, but if you have a, a passion project, you want me on board, um, you will get a thousand percent of my effort if we do end up working together, but, um, you know, I, of course I'll be compensated for that. So if, um, but then again, how much, what is, what does your project matter to you? Like, you know, how much is your project worth to you? You know, I mean, if you got clunky dialogue and the actors are reading it and they just look like, you know, there's, they got that look in their eye. You know, it depends on what your audience is. If you're just trying to make some after-school special and it'll fly by radar, fine. Okay? But if you're trying to win an award, you want to build on your legacy, you're trying to do something great, hire a real writer to help you fix your dialogue. Okay? And I'm not saying me, I'm just saying anybody. Anyway, last piece of advice. Okay. Joe Solo 12 in the books. We'll call this um, 
the rant for good. And um, I will see you guys in a couple weeks. We will have Unkillable Joe audiobook chapters, whatever and whatever, coming up next. I do them in two chapter segments. I want to say it is uh, chapters seven and eight is next out of 30. And there's an aftermath. So we got a ways to go. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And we will see you next time on the Mighty Pen Podcast. Podcast.